for this one, we have a division going on. This one does not require us to, to do long division or polynomial division because we only have one thing on the bottom. So what do you want to do here to make this problem easier is you want to take everything on top and divide it by x. That will create separate fractions and we can apply the power rule to each one. So I'm going to do 2x squared over x minus 3x over x plus 1 over x. So everything on top I'm dividing by x and then I'm going to simplify each of those separately. So when you simplify all that, you're going to get 2x minus 3 plus 1 over x. Okay. So that's just a, the preliminary setup work. We haven't done anything yet. We haven't found the derivative. We're just doing this first just to get it set up to where we can apply the power rule. So now here is where we're going to find the derivative. Now this first one, we have 2x. I showed before in a previous video, this is 2x to the 1 power. The 1 comes down, subtract 1 from the exponent, and you get x to the 0, which is going to turn into a 1. Now another way of thinking about this is anytime you have a constant times an x, your derivative is always going to be the constant that comes in front of the x. The reason why, well, let's say this, this rest of this wasn't here, and we just had f of x equals 2x. Now that's a line. So straight lines, the slope is always the number that comes in front of the x. So when you do this, you're taking the derivative of it. So derivative is the same as a slope. That's why you get 2. So the derivative of 2x is just going to be 2. The derivative of negative 3, that's a constant. Derivative of a constant is always going to be 0. Now this one over here, the 1 over x, we can't simplify that. But maybe I'd like to go ahead and change it into x to the negative 1 to make it easier, so then that way I can apply the power rule to that. So 1 was in the bottom, we brought it up, and we get this. Apply the derivative, negative comes down, x, subtract 1 from the exponent, I get negative 2. We're subtracting here, that's why we get a minus 2 there. We can rewrite this with positive exponents, and we get this. We get 2 over 2 minus 1 over x squared. That's your final answer for part A. For part B, we need to first change all this into powers so we can apply the power rule. This is x to the 1 half. Anytime you have a square root power, it's always 1 half because there's an index of 2 that's inside there, so you get x to the 1 half. This one right here is a minus 5, and I have x to the negative one half because the square root was originally on the bottom of the fraction and the minus five we put out front there. The square root of two, I'm just going to leave it as is because that's a constant. We can, we can get a number in our calculator for that. The derivative of it's going to be a zero. So this we don't need to change into a power because we know the derivative of that's going to give us a zero. Now that we have it set up properly, we're ready to use the power rule. One half is going to come down. Subtract one from the power. So 1 half minus 2 over 2, you'll get negative 1 half. For this one, I have negative 5, but then I'm going to multiply it by the derivative of x to the negative 1 half. To do that one, negative 1 half is going to come down, x, subtract 1 from the exponent, I get negative 3 halves. That's negative 1 half minus 2 over 2, you'll get minus 3 halves. The derivative of square root of 2 is going to be 0. So this part, we just need to rewrite it uh, without the negative exponents. So I'm going to rewrite it as 1 over 2 square root of x. The square root is going to go on the bottom. I could also write that if I wanted to, I could leave it as the 1 half power as well. Actually, in this case, I'll go ahead and leave it as a 1 half power in case we want to get common denominators later. So I'm going to leave it as a 1 half power, but you could make it square root as well. This is all together, so negative 5 times negative 1 half, you get a plus. 5 is on top, a 2 is on the bottom, and this will be x to the positive 3 halves. This is okay to leave your answer in that form. You don't need to worry about changing it unless it specifically asks you to write your answer as a single fraction. Let's suppose it did ask us to write that as a single fraction. Let's talk about how we would simplify that. What you have to do is get common denominators. You want to get both the bottoms to be, both the bottoms already have two, but you want the powers to be three halves. So what you can do here 
is multiply top and bottom by x because when you multiply you're going to add the exponents together that would be one half plus one would give you the three halves so that's what you could do to combine it and then if you do that one that step then you're going to get x plus five on top on the bottom uh, you would get two x to the three halves here's another way you can write that if you wanted to write it with roots and radicals you could write it this way you could do two x times the square root of x because technically that's what I have going on down here so instead of combining it together I could think of this separately I have a 2 square root of x times an x so I could write it like that as well so this would be the way to write it um, without using any fractional powers and then it's combined together as a single fraction but again you don't need to worry about doing that unless the directions specifically ask you to do so